Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies with another tutorial. This time we're going to be working on the Beast Skewer Killbow. So it is the Cruel Boys artillery piece. Um, at first glance, this model looks kind of complicated, um, kind of finicky to put together and kind of finicky to get your brush in and all those extra details. Um, so I'm going to show you how I painted this in sub-assemblies, um, all the techniques that I used and how I got it done in, I'd say, about two hours. So stick around to the end and see if I pull that off. Enjoy! Okay, so these are the sub-assemblies that I use for this miniature. As you can see, I've broken off all the little attendants and the guys holding the big quiver. Um, I've glued them to a 40 millimeter base, um, just so they stand up. Uh, the little guy who looks like he's holding an ax, but it's actually, I think, the lever action for the, uh, the back of the crossbow. And then the crossbow itself. Um, I've left all of this as one piece. As you can see, I can pretty much get at any part of it I want from here. Everything is quite separate. Um, so this worked perfectly for the painting process. And we're gonna start with the skin. And for this, we're going to use Plague Bear Flesh Contrast and give it a nice all-over coat onto the skin. The actual crossbow itself doesn't reveal a lot of skin. Um, he's wearing a lot of uh, cloth and fur. And he's got a big crossbow on the way and he's wearing his armored helmet and stuff like that. So he doesn't actually have a lot of skin to talk about. Um, but the attendants, they have a lot. So just take your time. Um, make sure you peruse the miniature all over and try and find any of the exposed skin. I actually realized later on during the painting process that I had forgotten his right hand. I had to go back with a bit more Plague Bear Flesh and cover that back up again. And here's the attendants. As you can see, they have a lot more skin on show. Um, both arms, both legs and his face. Even his little belly, little pop belly sticking out is a uh, skin. So make sure you get these guys done. These guys are such characterful additions to the miniature. Um, the artillery piece itself ends up being a grand total of four models, one orc and three uh, little goblins. And uh, they fill out the base beautifully. You can see when I put it all together as one miniature at the end, it, it's a really cool piece. Okay, and there we have it. There's the skin done on all of the uh, bits and pieces. You can see the guy uh, hunkered down. Uh, just make sure he is like 95% skin, so make sure to give him a good coat. Now we're moving on to the Nas Drag Yellow. Um, I believe I forgot to show the pot there, I do apologize. Nas Drag Yellow for all of the cloth, and that's once again to match in with my Crow Boys army, so it sits nicely with my force that I've already painted. Nas Drag Yellow works as a fantastic, like, kind of a dirty cloth color. You can imagine orcs aren't particularly good when it comes to hygiene or going to the laundrette, so they're gonna have pretty manky cloth material. So I think Nas Drag Yellow works a treat for this. And basically just take your time, go around, find all the cloth bits. Um, all of these models are kind of on top of each other, so it does take a little bit of investigative work to uh, find all the bits of cloth on it. And just take your time, make sure you don't hit the, uh, the green for the skin. Okay, and there's the three pieces done with the Nastra Yellow see all the cloth on him as you can see he's got a lot of cloth on him as well I nearly missed those bits around his neck when I was doing them the first time and even here at this point I lifted up these miniatures and showed you and then realized that I hadn't painted the leathery quiver that carries all the extra bolts so I had to go back and do that so you'll see now that that magically has a coat of yellow on it now just don't tell him movie magic shall we say that's Hollywood for you um, so now we're going to use Gorgrunt of Fur to paint all of the wood and straps on the miniature. So this bolt skewer thing is uh, a lot of wood um, held together by a lot of metal rivets. And we will get to that in a minute. So just take your time. I do a lot of stabbing motion. It's at this exact point that I realized that I forgot his right hand with the Plague Bear Fesh. So more movie magic in a minute. You will see that suddenly appear as green. Don't ask me how it happened. But uh, yeah, Gorgon the Fur, you will need to use a lot of stabbing motion to get it in between all of those uh, rivets and panels and stuff like that, just to get the, uh, the brown on all the bits and pieces that you need to do. The main focus of a miniature is obviously the giant crossbow, so take your time and try and make this look as cool as possible. This is the miniature with all the brown done, and you can clearly see how much brown is on the miniature. But I think it's a stunning color for the start of the bow. 
I think it looked great. I've also done the straps going around the uh, the orc himself, holding on his armor panels, anything holding on his wrists and stuff like that. Um, any other parts on both of the attendants, all three of the attendants who have brown straps and stuff, that was done with the Gorgon to fur as well. Now it's time for the uh, the longest part of painting this miniature, and that is base coating all of the metallics. For this, I switched over to lead belcher, drop of water to make it uh, flow a little bit better off my brush, took a deep breath, and got to work. I'd say this was by far the longest part of the painting process. Um, I'd say it took nearly 40 minutes just to uh, find all the different silver trim bits all over the miniature and to block them in with silver. Maybe 45 is a bit of a stretch, maybe half an hour. But uh, it's well worth the effort. It makes up a huge portion of the miniature with big arms on the bow and everything. So just get it right. There we go. Here's all the, the silver has been done. And now we're going to go on to quickly do the stomach shield thing that he has. I'm going to do this in orange so that it matches all of the scare shields on all of my infantry. It'll just help the miniature tie in with the rest of my army a little better. It's the only part of this miniature that you can apply orange to um, with the spot color, so I thought, why not? So here's the miniature, all base coated, ready to rock and roll. What we're going to do from here is we're going to apply our all over wash to shade all the parts, pull all the tones together before we begin the layering process. So with all of my crew boys, I've been using the um, Sarah from Sepia. Once again, I don't know why I forgot to hold the pot up in the camera there. I do apologize. So Sarah from Sepia is the shade of choice here. And a heavy amount of it on the brush. And then just start moving it around the miniature to all the spots that you need it to go. It'll do a lot of the flowing by itself, but just make sure it doesn't pool anywhere. If you watched my previous video, I talked a lot about the fact that people aren't going to be picking up individual cruel boys to be nosing at, but they will be picking up things like this. Um, while I was waiting for the shade to dry, I got the base done. And now we're really starting to feel like it's getting close to a completed miniature. Where we're going to go from here is we're going to first start to layer up the skin. This model here has taken two contrast and shade beautifully, so he was a lot of fun to actually... Uh, layer up his face you can see all those crisp details and all those dark shades in his face so knowing where to highlight is perfect a little bit across his chin his cheek his brow bone big pointy nose and his eyebrow around his lip and all of a sudden you've got this beautifully defined goblin face it took no time at all but it looks fantastic And then anywhere the light hits, we're going to add a little bit of green too. Same thing for this guy. As you can see, a lot of his green is hidden away. And I uh, make sure at this point to go in and layer up all the little feet left on the base. You can see they are now green. Obviously, they got covered up with gray during the basing process. So just make sure you get all the little extra feet. So you don't have to paint them again later. Okay, moving over to Balor Brown. That's the layer color for all of that yellow cloth of that beaten old leather. So if you take your time, I like to uh, follow a direction. So all of this uh, layering will be going in the up and down motion, following the natural uh, curves of the material of cloth, trying to leave some shadow in the recesses. Camera never likes zooming in on the yellow parts, don't know why. So just take your time and layer up all the yellow. When you do, it should look something like this. Little goblin man with his little robes all done up. Ready to go to the party. And the big quiver. So now we're going to add a little bit extra highlight to all of those parts with a uh, dry brush of Yashapti Bone. We're going to be aiming for the cloth, skin, and any of the brown bits with this. So moving over to a dry brush, 
nice back and forward motion just trying to catch all of the edges I really do think this adds something spectacular to uh, this particular paint job the yellow looks a little bit flat after that layering job something about a simple bone dry brush just adds that extra depth to it catching all those edges show you what it looks like on some of the bone now lightly dry brushing over that try and follow to the um, go against the wood grain don't go with the wood grain don't want that bone going in between all those cracks like I just did at the end there but you want it to look something like this and there he is with his dry brushing all done looking sharp and crisp lovely little miniatures and now back to lead belcher just to layer that metallic back up after the um the shade kind of darkened it down a little bit this is a very quick highlight all we're trying to do is add a little bit of that silver color back in kind of edges and flat panels and leave the shade into all the cracks and recesses as you can see it took about 10 seconds to do that miniature I'm just going to follow through and do the same thing with the rest. So all the little gears and uh, a little metal banding that holds that whole contraption together. Finally back in focus. And there we have it. I have taken the, uh, the rest of the little miniatures off of their bases. I actually cut the tabs off of their feet, um, mainly because the tabs are covered in paint and the holes that they click into are covered in paint so they don't fit properly anymore. So I just cut them off and then uh, super glue them in and hold them together really, really nicely. And this is the final result. This is the first kill bow for my army. It's quite pleasing to me. I believe I will be adding in a second one. Um, try and do a bit of conversion work with that so they don't look exactly the same, but. I'm super pleased with this. I'm more than happy to put this on the table and have people ogle at and gawk at it and stuff like that. And there we have it, guys. As you can see, I left the model in three parts, um, gluing those extra pieces of the bases so they stay sturdy on the tabletop um, and it's easier to hold them and paint them. And at the end, they just snap right off. They're only held onto those bases with a bit of super glue. Um, and then I managed to put the whole thing back together. That basically dispels the myth that it's kind of hard to paint. As you can see, it was very easy to get at any parts of the miniature, all the details you get to with the way that I broke that miniature up. I used most of the same techniques um, that I used for painting any of the other Crew Boys units that I used, um, except for the big bow itself. Um, I hope you did enjoy the video. I hope you found it um, useful. It dispelled any fears you had that this miniature was somehow going to be complicated or difficult to uh, add into your army. If you did find it useful, if you did enjoy the video, Think about subscribing to the channel and dropping the video a like and if you have any questions about what i did or anything else by that matter just drop a comment below and um, i do my very best to get back to each and every one of you guys um and yeah really enjoying the support i really appreciate it guys thanks a lot bye remember the plan is simple we paint them all